Hi guys, it's Rod. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to do to get ready for iOS 14.5, which is an updated operating system from Apple for Apple devices that will most certainly have an impact on Facebook advertisers. And there are some things that you need to do within your ad account to lessen the impact that those changes make as much as possible. So let's get into it. Now, before we get started, as usual, if you uh, like this content or you like any of the content on my YouTube channel, please go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe. I really appreciate that. I just want to recap on what these changes that are being made by Apple with iOS 14 or more specifically iOS 14.5 and how they're going to impact things. So this is the latest data from uh, or the latest update here from Facebook. And essentially what it's all about is Apple has introduced something that's called a app tracking transparency. And what that means is that if you are a user, then you are going to see a screen which is going to ask something like, basically, do you agree to provide data to track? Essentially, what's happening is that Apple is requiring companies who use data for tracking to actually ask for permission to be able to do that tracking when the app is open after iOS 14.5 is installed. So what Facebook are doing is they are going to introduce uh, like an introduction pop-up before the official Apple pop-up where there's the permission is asked, which will explain you know, what it is that you're being asked and what Facebook will actually do with that data. Then you'll be able to click continue and then you'll be able to either opt in or opt out of sharing that data with Facebook. Now, for those people who don't share or who choose not to share the data with uh, Facebook, essentially what that means for you as an advertiser is that the only data that you really know about that person is whether or not they have uh, made a purchase. Well, actually, it'll be whether or not they have uh, triggered an event, which I'm going to show you a bit later when you set up your web events, it'll be whether you've, they've triggered the highest priority event that you have set up in your web events within your Facebook Business Manager. So let's get on to what it is that you actually need to do within your Facebook Business Manager so that you are all ready for iOS 14.5. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you've got to set up domain verification within your Business Manager. There's a couple of ways that you can set up the domain verification, but as it says here, Essentially what the domain verification is all about is that whatever domain is verified within a business manager, it's to verify that that is actually the business manager that can modify or edit permission over links in your ads for that particular domain. And that includes both the organic and the paid content. And once you've verified your domain, you can assign specific pages for uh, editing your ads after you've done that. Now, Domain verification also helps ensure that only the correct parties can edit link previews that directs your content. And it's something that we've always done for clients as part of our general checkup with Facebook accounts to make sure that they are as trusted as possible and configuring the domain and verifying the domain is one of those things. So how do you go about verifying your Facebook domain? Well, I'm going to dive on over here to the Facebook ads manager. You'll need to go into your business settings and you'll need to go down to brand safety and then you'll need to go down to domains. Now I've already set up uh, several domains here under my agency account but essentially what you do is you click on the add button and then you type in the domain name. Uh, let's just add in I'm going to add in the domain name that I don't actually have registered but just to illustrate for you. So once you've done that, the domain is not verified at that point. You need to actually do something to register the domain or to actually verify the domain with Facebook. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You know, you can do that with what's called a meta tag verification, a HTML file upload or a DNS verification. Now, if you have access to your website backend, and for most people, if they run Shopify or even if they're running Neto, you would generally would have access to your backend. And it's, I find the easiest thing to do is to simply add this tag here. So if you can copy that to the clipboard and add that to the header section of the back end of your website. So you'll need to refer to documentation for both Shopify and Edo, but I find that is the most straightforward way to verify a domain. So what you need to do is you copy that code there, you go in and edit the file in your header section of your website, you paste that onto a new line, save it, then come back into the Facebook Business Manager Click on verify and then once the 
page has been refreshed within Facebook, it usually takes a few minutes, then you'll be able to see that the domain is verified and it'll show up like it is here from other domain. You see it shows up as being verified. So that's step one. That's how you actually verify the domain. And the next step that you have to do is you have to configure your web events. So to configure your web events, you're going to need to go back to your hamburger icon there and then go to events manager. Make sure you've got the correct pixel selected. Then you go to aggregated event measurement and you click on configure web events. Now, as you can see, I've already got the web events configured for this client, but what you do is you just select that. You go manage events. Now, bear in mind that if you do this after the, well, basically OS 14.5 is roll, rolled out, which it is rolling out at the moment, it may take up to 72 hours for your ads and ad sets to be published after you make a change with this configuration. So the sooner that you do it, the better. Select on edit. Now, what, you, what you have is you've got eight slots that you can fill. Now, if you've got an e-commerce store, which is generally the clients that we work with, you're probably going to have four of those slots are going to be filled with this event name here, which is purchase, because there are value set ranges within that event slot. Now, the other event that you need to add in, I would add in uh, purchase, initiate checkout, add to cart, and view content. So it's basically to add an event, what you do is just click on add event, and you choose the correct pixel, and then you choose the event that you want to add in. So in this case, I might also want to add in the search event. I'm not going to save this. And once you've added the event in, then you click on submit, and that will then actually save uh, those events. Now, there's an important thing, because if you don't already have these events configured and you need to add them in, you then got to make sure that they're in the right order of priority. So in terms of the priority, you can simply drag them around just like that, just by dragging over that that's, uh, six dotted icon. But make sure that you've got them, if you're running an e-commerce store, you want to have purchase at the top, initiate checkout, add to cart, view content. You may want to have search, but we're not actually going to include that. Now, if you are not running an e-commerce store and you're just doing, say, lead generation, then it's whatever is your highest priority event. So it might be a lead or it might be you know, it might be that's completed a survey or it's completed a form, whichever is the, the event that you're trying to optimize for, that needs to be the one that's at the top of the page. So essentially what this means is that those people who do not opt in for the app tracking, Facebook will only be able to track the highest priority event that that person has done. And in this case, it would be purchased. So you want to make sure that the, the main event, I can't stress this enough, make sure the main event that you want to track is at the top of the list because if somebody doesn't opt in, that's the only event you'll be able to track. Now, if somebody does opt in, then all the other events will be tracked as well. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. As usual, if you've enjoyed this content, please go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe. I really appreciate that. It really helps me out. Now, if you are looking for additional help with your Facebook advertising, whether it's with something like this, getting ready for iOS 14.5, or you're struggling to get decent results, or you're actually just looking at advertising on Facebook for the first time and your uh, budget is somewhere above $150 per day, then I am taking strategy sessions with business owners at the moment and there'll be details about that below and you can book in and have a chat. Generally, these strategy sessions run for around about 30 minutes and what we're doing is uh, having a look at what you're currently doing or not doing and put together a plan for you that you can use and you can take away for yourself if you want to go on ahead and run with that or if you need additional help with that, then obviously that's something we can help you with. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.